Right, so I've got my ordered data here and this has just been set up as an Excel table and I've created this pivot table here. So you can download this spreadsheet, links in the description, no details required, anything like that, straight down on your PC so you can work along. Highlighting individual aspects and formatting individual things within a pivot table. And there's a definite technique and a whole load of kind of little fiddly things that if you get them wrong, really mess you up. So I'll get you my best sort of tips on this, what I've learned over the years. So the very first thing I would say is get rid of any filters. So if I've got a filter on the pivot table when I do the formatting, the formatting will only then apply to that filter. So if I do, that's for the sake of argument, just um, have all these sales items in red, and then I'll change to 2022, it's completely gone. If I go back to 2020 though, they're back red again. So I'm just gonna undo that. Now, I went through the trouble of applying a whole load of special filtering to 2021, only to realize, of course, that I'd forgotten to take this filter off. So this is how I want it to look like, and that's what I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do now. But what you need to do is get rid of that filter, get rid of any filters at all, because if we apply this when there's no filter set, then when we apply filters, everything will be okay, and it will remember it. The main thing you need to do is make sure that you've got like arrows. When you hover over things on pivot tables, you'll get these arrows. And, it, and the key to having a fill, any kind of format retained on a refresh is that this arrow was present when you did the filtering. So let's just try that September highlight. So I'm gonna try an August highlight actually. And so by doing that, I can make sure that just August is highlighted. If I incidentally sort of went, drag that down, it wouldn't necessarily have the same effect. So just make sure you've got that arrow. But I don't really want things like the row, you know, the header rows and stuff colored in. I just want the numbers colored in. So if I hold down control and go over to sales, you'll see I get the intercept of those two sections. If I do profit, I'll get, again, the intercept of that. So I'm gonna highlight this yellow. No, I'm not, it looks awful. That blue looks reasonable, right? So I do that. But now you see, I've got the subtotals highlighted, which Maybe I don't want, if I do, maybe I don't. But what I'm gonna show you, of course, is that then you can highlight those two. And if you say you want no fill on those, it will. It doesn't sort of empty the, the, the style, it reverts back to the original style. So you don't need to like find your exact color and match it or anything. You just go no fill. And there we have that. That will withstand a refresh, as you can see. Now, if I go back to 2020 now, you'll see August has been shown like that. I go back to 2021. Now that's interesting because it's remembered my formatting that I previously did on 2021 um, before. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. If you're currently in, for the sake of argument, August 22, filter it to 22, put that on, and it will retain it. Now, of course, you could use this that technique for like actuals versus forecast kind of coloring if you want. So every month you just go in, filter it to the current day, year, highlight one more column. Then when you go back through history, you'll find everything be highlighted and retained. So actually quite a useful feature. So go back on all. Because what if I wanted to highlight, say, this, just the profit for the grand total? Now, 
there's a bit of a quirk in here because if I highlight just the grand total there and then click on hold down control click on just the profit it actually highlights both the sales and the profits kind of annoying so let's just make that you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute we'll make that one shade darker and also incidentally highlights the total grand total there so we have it like that again it's going to withstand the refresh but then of course what you can do is remove the sales formatting by doing no fill on it to go back to the style so this is how we can have we can do it we just need to do things in the right order sort of pilot everything and then almost like revert back the bits you don't want and through combinations of doing that you can get some you know great effects on your pivot table We've done all this formatting, we want to make sure we don't lose it. Right click, pivot table options, or go up here and click options. And these two settings are key, either auto fit or don't on refresh, and but definitely preserve cell formatting. Now, one thing I'll just mention on preserving cell formatting, I've wrapped column, uh, sort of column headers on pivot tables before and made sure that button's ticked and it's not preserved them. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I haven't quite got to the bottom of what's going on there. If you know, please put it in the comments because I'd love to know why sometimes this doesn't appear to work. But generally, it does work and definitely want to tick it. Hope those tips were useful. If you want more, check out my playlist on pivot table tips. And of course, download that spreadsheet if you want all of the examples. And remember, subscribe to my channel. See you soon.